Hi there, everyone, and welcome to this segment called CCA. And CCA stands for Coffee Chat with Alumni. And here you are joining us with our alumni. And today we have nine alumni invited back to share their perspective with us on when they were students, how they were involved in their own CCAs, and how they participated, how they benefited, and some of the memories that they have. And an interesting fun fact that we have here is that in SB, we actually have 109 CCA clubs. That's a huge variety to choose from. And I think we are known among all the five polys uh, to be the poly that has the largest amount of CCAs available for students. So anyway, to our viewers, my name is Justin. I'm a student development officer with the Department of Student Development, as you can see in my icon backdrop behind. And we actually have nine alumni joining us uh, today. And they are from the different CCAs from the different clusters. So we have things like from the arts, from the sports, from service learning, which is like community service. We even have special interests and even from Cons Club. And they are here represented to just share with you a little bit more. And joining me on this uh, journey, interviewing the alumni, is an alumni to be, and her name is Zainab. And Zainab is also one of the CCA uh, persons who have been involved actively in her uh, journey as a student. So Zainab, why don't you just start the ball rolling and tell us more a little bit about yourself and the CCA that you were involved in. Hi everyone, my name is Diana. I was in Theatre Compass. I was a member and I got the chance to serve as president during my time there. So Theatre Compass met up weekly once a week. During that time, we do a lot of drama games to hone our improv and drama skills. Of course, closer to production dates, we have uh, rehearsals. Uh, speaking of productions, every year we have at least one, which is the annual Arts Fiesta production. During my time, we put up a play written by the local player Harish Sharma title Off Center, which was a, um, centered around mental health. It was quite a challenging experience um, acting, uh, complex characters, but very exciting time to be a part of. Wow, Zaina. So you mentioned that you were also the president of Theatre Compass. So tell us a little bit more about how you became the president and you know what, what goes on being the president of a club. Not very sure. I don't know. I knew. I know how I became president, but I was very interested in serving and helping from a leadership uh, capacity. Uh, while I was there, it was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we had to do, doing our proposals, liaising with outside parties. For our end of production, we helped to liaise with um, the Institute of Mental Health. So, um, getting our members to go down and speak to the speak to the social workers there to get a more um, a bit more research in order for us to play the characters authentically. So those are like what you have done for uh, bigger projects that your CC goes about doing. What about the day-to-day -day or like monthly, weekly? What what do you do as a CCA? As a CCA, we also have oh, well, it was just it's just drama games, um, also activities to to hone those skills. Uh, from the leadership capacity, I had to work with my exco members and also took care of the welfare of the of our of our of our thespians, uh, made sure that they were okay when they were acting, they were able to get out of the character at the end of the day because we don't want them to bring it home. That can be quite dangerous. Yeah. Wow, okay, interesting to know. So, Zainab, you are also from uh, Chemical Life uh, Sciences. It's a course, right? That's a school, actually. Oh, and I have I two see. schoolmates here with me, Jaren wow. and Tia Kang. Yeah. Um, I know Jaren is also part of the Environmental Club. So, Jaren, would you want to tell us more about your time in the CCA? Oh yeah, uh, sure. So I'm Jaren. I'm actually the alumni of the Environment Club. I'm actually the vice president of the Environment Club. I joined the Environment Club in Polytechnic because I was from Environment Council in my secondary school and I would like to continue my journey. Yeah, I'm from Diploma in Applied Chemistry, uh, same school as I need. So tell us about Jaren, what was your most memorable experience serving in the club? Uh, so my most memorable uh, experience is actually the Asia Plus 3 Youth Environment Forum where I'm acting as a licensed officer uh, for various Asia countries such as Laos, Thailand, Malaysia and actually made friends with them, uh, bring them around Singapore. That's really nice. So what do you learn about other countries and Singapore's perspective on environmental issues? Yeah. Uh, so uh, according to other countries, right, Singapore is actually very clean as compared to their country. Uh, 
And we're all trying, uh, during this uh, event, right, we're all trying to come up with projects to actually help tackle these environmental issues, which is actually quite fun. And we actually find out stuff that do not actually occur in Singapore, for example, uh, littering, pollution of rivers and seas as compared to other countries. Yeah. So what were some of the projects you were involved in? Uh, other projects compared to this? Or... Or the project the Environmental Club was uh, spearheaded and you were involved in? Alright, so we actually do uh, like bonding activities and road shows. Uh, we are famously uh, known for our road shows uh, in SP, whereby we invite other outside organizations to come to SP to introduce their company and share more about environmental awareness. Yeah. That's really great. Yes, I remember going for those road shows. Jaren, um, what do you think, what is your takeaway from your time serving in the Environmental Club? Uh, take, uh, my takeaway? Um, I'm actually, I actually made a lot of friends. I also learned leadership qualities, leadership skills by planning activities for the students and the teachers even. I um, also learned more about the environment that I did not know uh, when I joined the Environment Club. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing, Jaren. Uh, you mentioned that you had a schoolmate and also another member with you here, right? Jia Kang? Oh yeah, he's the president of the Environment Club. Uh, maybe, oh. he can, maybe he can speak to you more about uh, Environment Club or his interests. Tell us about Jia Kang, yeah. Hello, I'm Jia Kang. Um, I'm the president of the Environment, SP Environment Club alongside with Jaren. Uh, during my time there, I had a very meaningful time for sure. Um, being a leader, uh, having a position of the president uh, in environmental club, um, it taught me a lot of soft skills in terms of how to manage my own committee, how to work together, knowing the strengths of my um, committee, and and um, and using the best out of it. Uh, not just uh, understanding that everyone has shortcomings and working from there. And so, uh, with my committee members, I think we had a really meaningful year. Uh, we at the youth event that Jaren shared and also uh, spearheaded a lot of um, internal roadshows within SP with the effort to raise um, environmental awareness and also to encourage a uh, greener lifestyle. Yeah, so that was extremely meaningful, meaningful. and till today, I think we, we built a quite a close one within um, my ex school. yeah. Wow, thanks for sharing that, Chia Kang. So Chia Kang, I want to uh, ask you a little bit more about your involvement and interest about environment. Uh, apart from being involved in the CCAs that you are already part of, uh, you also participated in uh, extra activity conducted by the student development and that is in uh, the terms of doing an overseas community project overseas in Bintan. And particularly that project had uh, some environmental uh, issues or, or awareness that uh, was rather central, the central team for it. So uh, I wonder whether you can take us through about your time being involved in this project called the Youth Expedition Project and it's called Operation Swag, if I'm not wrong. Yes, for sure, Mr. Justin. So um, yeah, we went to Bintan um, and it, well, the Swag, we used, we used three letters inside of it. Uh, which is SWG, and it also stands for Safe Water Gardens. Essentially, the function of this is to provide a safe and affordable sanitation system for the homes in the rural areas. Uh, the problem that we faced was because um, the rural areas, they lack a proper sewage system. And so what happens is that all the human waste end up, end up in the hole, in a hole in the ground, polluting ground, groundwater and leading to many local cases of diarrhea and sickness. In an effort to uh, improve this condition, uh, this SWG came about. And during my stay there, I think I felt really sympathetic towards uh, how there could not be any like proper and hygienic toilet found. And was so grateful that um, here, in, here in our city, we have a very neat and organized sewage system. I still remember how long I stayed in my home's toilet when I first came back to Singapore. Yeah, and also when I was there, uh, we stayed in an eco resort. They, the, we stayed in overwater huts and the experiences were was actually quite memorable. I remember every morning we woke up to like a beautiful sunrise. Yeah. And also this eco resort was really special. Um, it focused a lot on just uh, green lifestyle, how only non-disposable utensils can be found and also a very proper trash disposal between 
plastics, paper, and food waste. Yeah, so those experiences also add, also value added to how um, I can better be as an as an as a green advocate. Yeah, also just like a side tip for the freshmen, um, for all these opportunities over on um, overseas, right? I'll just keep a lookout for your iChat um, email, and uh, because all these opportunities can be self sourced, and that's how I made the most out of my poly trip, of poly journey. Wow, thanks Chia Kang. That was an amazing uh, tip to all our freshmen out there to look out for their emails when they are a student and there are a lot of opportunities that comes out from student development that will give them this opportunity to sign up and be a part of. Um, now, as, as, uh, as a student, you, you were able to go overseas but uh, currently the, this current batch of students, they we're in a time where the pandemic really shook the whole world and uh, unfortunately a lot of them couldn't go out and do the community service but here in SP we are really uh, known to really thrive and be really resilient and be really innovative in our approach to things so uh, with that said we actually have a team here with us uh, and her name is Celeste and she has uh, coincidentally done a, an overseas trip but online uh, together with Zainab. So, but let's hear from Celeste. Uh, what was her experience like as a student leader leading this overseas trip online? So Celeste. Thanks, Justin. So I actually let the YP go, which means goes online with our Philippines counterpart. And uh, I think a problem we all faced was getting the energy level up and engaging with everyone. So there's a, the difference between the normal YEP and the YEP goal is that there is a lack of human element. So it was harder to connect to people through the screen of your laptop. So we tried many ways such as um, using other functions and utilizing fully the Zoom function so that everybody will not be bored. Because um, sometimes when you sit through hours of Zoom session, you, get, you tend to not listen. So that was a problem that we faced. And from my experience, I actually learned that um, there are still many ways to care for the community and it's not just uh, physically. Oh, thanks for that, Celeste. So Celeste, I noticed that there's a, behind your backdrop, there's a little icon there of a woman swimming. So does that mean that you are also a, a swimmer? Uh, yes, I was in swimming and I joined ever since I was in year one. So uh, the reason why I joined was a very quite a funny reason. I just wanted to stay fit. But um, when I entered, I realized that I had to be competitive. So there was no choice to be a casual swimmer. And that actually pushed me to train very, very hard. And I remember times whereby I was really, I really wanted to give up because it was very difficult and draining on me. And a memorable time will be that my teammates encouraged me uh, just to do my best and it's okay not to uh, get uh, first. So um, that's how I got into swimming. Right. And uh, in particular, with this club, you were uh, actually involved in competitions, right? So could you take us through a little bit about that? Uh, during competition season, we have uh, in the swimming committee, we call it um, IVP. IVP is with universities and then there's the Polite, which is Poly IT. So we compete with other schools as well. And during competition season, we will train uh, more regularly. So instead of the usual three times per week, and we will try to train every day. And about three days before the competition, we'll stop completely to let our body rest. So it was a uh, physical and mental training, actually. Mm, right. So, um, you know, Celeste, is you, apart from doing swimming, I also understand that you are also involved in another CCA. So as if one CCA wasn't enough, you took <laughs> up a, a second CCA. So tell us about that second CCA that you were involved in. Uh, I was in uh, CSCC, which stands for Community Service and Cultural Club. It was a very huge CCA and we have different subcommittees. So I was personally inside uh, Community Service and 
we what we do is we plan community service events and I was selected to be the secretary of the entire event and future event. So I planned um, events such as collaborations with the Down Syndrome Association and a memorable event will be the uh, three-day, two-night camp with the youth from Down Syndrome Association themselves. So I was able to gain many, many valuable experiences how to um, talk to a youth from, with a Down Syndrome. Wow. Thanks, thanks for sharing the experience with us, Celeste. So, Celeste is also part of the uh, swimming, as I mentioned earlier on, which is uh, Sports CCA. And we also have another person with us who is also involved in the Sports CCA. And he has an interesting story to share. He was once involved in Silat and still is involved in SP Silat. But this time round, he's involved as a coach. So, we like to call upon Tao Ha. Yeah, hi. Hi, Taha. So, Taha, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, maybe tell us when you have graduated? <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, my name is Taha. I was a student in the Diploma in Media and Communication. I graduated all the way back in 2006. Wow. Okay. So, he, you are probably the eldest among us here in, in, <laughs> in, in terms of the alumni graduated way back. So yes, tell us about your time as a student and how, how you came to be involved in Silat. Okay. Oh, whoops. Okay. Oh, we, we had a bit of a technical difficulty there, but no, no problem. Let me repeat my question again. Yes. So uh, uh, do share with us how you came to be involved in uh, SPC Lab as a student? Uh, well, my, I've been involved in Pencak Silat outside of school since I was a small kid, since my whole family was involved in it. So when I entered Singapore Polytechnic, uh, it's quite natural for me to continue and pursue it so as to try it at a different level, which is at the tertiary level. Okay. So now uh, you have been involved in Silat and um, Ever since graduating, right? Uh, how have you been involved in SPC Lab as a coach? Yeah, so uh, actually, when I was a student already uh, in the Singapore Poly, I was already assisting the club as a sort of like an assistant coach uh, unofficially. Yeah, because my father was the previous coach for Silat. Wow. So in 2007, uh, then I took over from him while I was still serving NS. So I've been coaching the Silat club ever since then until now. Wow, so 2007 and now... Uh, 14 yeah, years. <laughs> 14 years. So, out of that 14 years, uh, can, uh, can, can you tell us any any um, best memory that you have? Like, I think Silat went into some kind of competition. Uh, yes. did, we, did we win any competition? Uh, okay, so um, every, uh, usually every year there's a, this competition um, that is called the Tertiary Silat Championship whereby the, all the different polytechnics, uh, the ITE universities we will compete and fight for medals. And yeah, along, almost every year we have been able to get back at least one or a few gold medalists, if not a few silver, a few bronzes. And in 2018, uh, we managed to grab the second overall. So that was an achievement for us. Wow, wow, that's great. So, um, Ta, I want to ask you this question. Um, we, we heard about some overseas trips, right, uh, that some of our alumni here have shared. Uh, were there any sports trips that uh, Silat organised? Yeah, yes, uh, actually we do. We did quite a few over the years whereby uh, I will bring the students to Jakarta because uh, within the Silat uh, overall uh, internationally, there's the, that in the Jakarta, they have a place called Padipokan, which is actually the center of the whole uh, International Silat Federation. So there's a training center, there's a hotel. So we took the opportunity, we, I bring them there. Uh, we train with some of the best coaches in Indonesia and then we get to spar with the locals there. So the Indonesian fighters, you know, they train every day from a young kid 
So they get to spar with our students and that actually help us in our preparation for our local competitions. So exciting, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Taha. I think your experience is an example of um, like interest and profession. So we also have another member here, Caden, who turned his interest in videography into a CCA. Can you tell us more? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Caden, one of the former president of S3 Videography Club. So uh, why I joined Videography Club is because uh, I've been very interested in video production since uh, my day in secondary school. And I wanted to really continue what I like in poly. So uh, I think during my time as the president of the club was the most memorable experience for me, which I never expected when I was year one. So working with my officer closely on our work plans, every week I met, I met him to discuss about our progress and also spend, my, spend some time uh, with my members closely over lunch, dinner, or even community service to find out their worries and concerns during, their, during our CCA or even school work. So through that, I, I realized that I actually know what they are facing and help them to overcome it. I still remember how fun was our community service two years ago. Where, and I remember the feedback was our members wanted to organize another one, but sadly was cancelled during the pandemic. Yeah. Oh dear, so sad to hear that. Um, mm. But how about collaborations at the club? I believe you guys collaborated, Videography Club collaborated a lot for the annual arts fiesta event. Did that still I, happen last year in COVID? Uh, yes, we still collaborate. Uh, I heard from my successors that they still collaborate during the pandemic and in a very different way. But from what uh, my experience is, uh, we have been very actively involved every year. So I myself have get different roles every year like from learning of uh, learning how to use a camcorder in year one for the event to leading a videography team and in year two and liaising with other president in year three and what i like the most was actually the free performance to watch uh, as a crew member in the uh, in the art stuff yeah so what was one of the uh, production that was most memorable for you during your time serving actually i'm very impressed with style language club being honest because i don't i see the unity i like performance that is very united. I also hope my club was very united, uh, yeah. But I think uh, we are not a performance club. I think in a way, we behind the scene, as long as we are united, I think we also can put up a very good performance like Sign Language Club. Oh, thank you so much for sharing your site, Kaden. And uh, speaking of uh, Sign Language Club, we have the former president, Serafina. Hi, Serafina. Can you tell us more about your time during uh, SLC and how about the annual Sign Nature production? Hi everyone, my name is Serafina. I'm the former president of SP Sign Language Club. And yes, we liaise with SP Videography and SP Compress to hold this host this annual event called Sign Nature, whereby the members get to perform song signing to showcase the beauty of song, uh, sign language by applying what we learn from our sign language lessons in our performance and incorporating signs and choreography in a composition of songs for our families, friends, and the deaf. And um, why the reason the reason why I decided to join SP Sign Language Club is because uh, initially I signed up for uh, this sign language workshop hosted by uh, National Youth Achievement Award Club, NYAA, and uh, SP Sign Language Club because one of the requirements was to pick up a new skill under NYAA. So I decided it was a perfect choice as I had always wanted to learn sign language. And another reason why I joined uh, SP Sign Language Club was because uh, the people who inspired me to join was my seniors. And the seniors were very welcoming and patient. Throughout the workshop, uh, and they taught us the alphabets and numbers of sign language. And upon seeing this, their willingness and dedication to teach expect my interest even further in picking up this new skill. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, for those who don't know, all the CCAs are also matched with at least one student development officer and yours during your time was with Mr. Justin, who's here today. So Serafina, just between us, how was it like? What was the support given and you know? It was uh, <laughs> was really very interesting and it was very fun to have him around because he was really a patient person to uh, work with when uh, whenever we submit our proposals or our reimbursement form or claim forms he will, he will always be there to listen to our uh, proposals and also uh, advice on how to uh, make it even better so uh, Mr. Justin was truly a great person to work with yeah oh thank you <laughs> okay. disclaimer I didn't pay her to say that <laughs> So, Rafina, we would love if you can uh, teach us how to sign something. Maybe I love SP. 
Oh, of course, I'm willing to uh, teach you how to sign I Love SP. So, uh, very first thing to start off is to uh, do the letter I. So, in order to do that, uh, we'll point to ourselves, which is using the index, index fingers and point to ourselves. So, uh, to make sure, uh, we have to make sure that we not, do not stick our thumb as uh, it looks like the letter L, like this, means that it, will, uh, it, sh it looks like uh, we're holding a gun and shooting ourselves. So, uh, it's better to, uh, it's uh, for I, it's just pointing your index finger and into uh, ourselves. So this is letter I. So for love, uh, the, we have to start. Uh, uh, we have to sign the letter S, which is uh, the letter S is like this. So uh, make sure that our thumb is not the position like this because this is another alphabet. Letter S is to be like this. Mm. So if uh, to uh, to do in order to do love, so both hand sign S and we have to palm in. So uh, palm in means that facing uh, the palm is facing ourselves, and then uh, make sure to do, do uh, cross it over our chest. So this is love. So make sure to do uh, when you do love, you always do the love uh, lovelier ex loveliest expression because expression is very important in sign language. And also uh, uh, next one is S. So the letter S is like this. That's what you have learned just now and the letter P. So the, in order to do letter P, so you have to do uh, put the thumb in between the index as well as the middle finger and then point the middle finger downwards. So this is letter P. So let's go through again how to do I love SP. So point to yourself the I love S P. Well done everyone. Everyone did a good job. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for teaching us that, sorry, Fina. Okay, so Sign Language Club is another, it's a service learning club and BB Mentoring is another example. We have Sharon, who was a member. Can you tell us more about your time there? Uh, hi, I'm Sharon. Uh, I graduated from the Diploma in Human Resource Management and Psychology not too long ago, last year in 2020. So I was part of the SPBB Mentoring Club since year one and I served as the vice president in year two. So uh, I joined SPBP Mentoring Club because I really like to play with kids, which is basically the community that we serve. So every Wednesday we have weekly sessions where we go down to the different schools to actually interact, uh, teach and play with the mentees. So these mentees are usually primary school kids who are usually in need. So they may be facing like difficulties, journey of growing up, for instance, like from more complicated family backgrounds or kids who cannot catch up in their academics and they may not have the luxury of like tuition. So from time to time, our mentors will have dinner sessions afterwards so that we can bond. And so through these weekly sessions and also uh, a lot of uh, external events like the bonding events that we have, uh, I think our club really bonded like a family, yeah. That's really nice to hear. So Sharon, working with kids is surely both fulfilling and quite challenging, right? Can you share a moment that was either one? Uh, I think, as you say, kids are, uh, uh, can be very, they can be very cute at times. They can also uh, go all the way out to annoy you uh, just because they are naughty. Uh, but I think uh, one of the most memorable one was uh, this center that I was attached to. So there was this kid, uh, he actually he had some learning difficulties actually. So he was very, very young. He was around, only around primary one or two. So uh, the center manager actually told us that uh, he actually had some difficulties in terms of like learning, but he was actually very, he was a, he was a very open and uh, active kid. So uh, there, was, there was once he actually, uh, he was playing with the cars and all, and then he actually like, uh, he, he's someone who doesn't really like to share his stuff. So when a kid really shares like his his toys with you, it's like a sign that they really, really like enjoy your company. So I think that was like one of the most memorable moments that I had. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Sharon, for sharing. So by the way, Sharon, uh, uh, you came from this uh, CCA called um, BP Mentoring. Can you share with us what does the BP stands for? Uh, I think there's a lot of people who will ask what does BP stands for. So basically BP stands for British Petroleum. It's our sponsor. So basically we actually have a lot of sister clubs in MP, other polytechnics like NP, NYP, and a few other like uh, institutions. So uh, this company actually sponsors our, our mentee events where our com service events with our mentees. So that's where we get all our fundings from. Uh, to host 
uh, like large scale events like the mentoring educational fair that we have every year where we get all the kids down to our school itself, the transport costs incurred and all is actually sponsored by them. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, for sharing and taking us on that journey on uh, mentoring and just working with uh, young kids and young young children, which can be really rewarding. Okay. So uh, we started off with Zainab and she's from the Arts Cluster in Theatre Compass. And we're going to end this session very soon with another person from the Arts Cluster. And he is involved in dance. Okay. And it's called SDZ. Uh, let's welcome Richard. Richard, uh, you've been involved in SDZ as well as uh, opening up your own production house. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that as a student and thereafter what you have done. So sure. over to you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Richard. So I graduated uh, SP back in 2015 and I joined SP SDZ or Strictly Dance Zone since year one. And I was the publicity head uh, when I was there in year two. And then I also take a also role of choreographer when we have a performance or concert that we have annually. So usually we train um, twice a week, um, Monday and Wednesday. And that's where we train our foundations of dance to get better. And also when it comes to uh, when there's a concert, we will train um, even more intensely even like during the holiday so we will come back and just train and prepare for the concerts so those are the times that I spend on most of my time I'm dancing with my friends and I really enjoyed it a lot and it really brings me to where I am now because I really like dance so much that I actually also have the interest of um, doing videos through the publicity uh, publicity uh, hit role that I had back in SDZ. So I decided to make my own company to focus on doing dance videography. So yeah. That's so interesting. And this is another example of interest and profession, but you really married everything, your academics, your experience in the CCA. Surely there are some, uh, it takes a bit of courage to start your own company, right? What were your thoughts when you first opened it? Definitely, it's quite challenging, especially to convince your parents yeah, and stuff. But in general, I had a lot of uh, support from friends and also the committee itself. Um, through my times back in SPSDZ, I also was introduced to the community quite early. So I, I'm quite used to the how the dance community in Singapore uh, are. And then the moment that I started to go deep into this dance videography thing and they are actually very supportive about it. So I'm very grateful about that. So this will not happen if I don't join SDZ. Yeah. Wow, all right. So wow. do you have any hopes for the SDZ, um, CCA or the dance community in Singapore? Ooh, I hope everybody can perform on big stage. Like last time we managed to perform in Esplanade, Talang Theatre. I hope one day we'll go back to that. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Richard. So, Richard, I have one uh, parting question for you. Uh, so, as you have started your own uh, production house, uh, is there something that you have uh, done to uh, with SDZ, with the current batch? Oh, yes, correct. Actually, last year, I helped SDZ to do their own virtual uh, art fiesta, for art fiesta. So, I was actually the one that in charge to help the club to film their dance routines and then just compile it for us to start. Wow. Let us talk a little bit about that because that seems to be like the new norm now that, you know, CCAs now can't really be face to face, although uh, the government is trying to ease up its restrictions. But take us through at that point of time where restrictions were still hard to do face to face, how was online activities being conducted? Yeah, actually, now we have no choice but you have to go digital so i'm actually um quite um, grateful that i have the ability to give back to my club so it's like um, it was actually quite a nice uh, moment for me to like be able to contribute back as an alumni and then help them to uh, bring out um because we don't have the audience anymore but at least now people can watch from home so there's something that at least we have better than nothing and yeah and then um I guess sooner or later everyone have to adapt into this new norm and then like I'm um, I'm just happen to be in this position that I can help the, those dancers to help make their video out there. Yeah. 
Wow. Thank you. Thank you. So, thanks everyone. Uh, I think we have come to an end of our about 20-25 minutes of uh, CCA, which is once again, Coffee Chats with alumni. So, I just want to extend my uh, warmest appreciation to all the alumni here who have been take, taken their time out, really precious time out, to just join us here on this online session to just really talk a little bit about uh, what inspired them and I hope that this uh, really inspires you all uh, uh, our incoming freshmen so although our alumni will not be uh, here in SP to actually give you that warm welcome and to see you personally but on behalf of them I will be in SP and I'll be involved in student development so I really do hope to see you involved in any of our student development activities or any of the 101 sorry 109 CCA clubs that you could choose from so there's always something for everyone so we hope to see you around in SP so take care stay safe goodbye